George, I first saw you on February 5th, 2004 at Brent Town Hall when I thought I was going to fight you. Uh, you might recall, you know, we both um, thought we might be drawn against each other in the ABA yep. welterweight Northwest Divisionals. In the end, I didn't fight you, you didn't fight me, but 15 years on, we're still talking about promise unfulfilled and the next move. Talk to me. Yes, well, no one else to blame but myself. You see, it's just not living the life of a professional athlete. But I'm lucky to get the chance that I've got. And um, with moving to Vegas, training with Jeff Mayweather, being a part of the, the team out there and getting and fulfilling my, something that I should have fulfilled many, many years ago. But I don't want to look at saying what, what if and what I should have done. I just want to crack on now and just get on with it and you know, no more talking. Just just get on with it and um, you know, try, try and achieve something and keep up with these youngsters um, that are coming through. You talk about youngsters. I believe you're, you're 34 or 35? 34. You know, I think athletes and boxers in particular are less in longer these days, people say, if they've lived a life. How do you feel in yourself? Because 35 isn't necessarily old. No, if you the thing, the, the thing about me, the thing about me is I haven't had... I haven't had um, any wars. It'd be different if I've had I've had wars and I've taken chunks like that, put miles on the clock. Yeah. I haven't had that, you know. So um, I'm lucky. Um, so yeah, listen, I'm not another another three, four years, four years max, you know, and trying to achieve something that I should achieve, as I said. And that's what it's about. You you haven't thought if I'm correct in thinking, since 2016, is that yeah. the case? So, um, we've got, you've got this opportunity due to various things where you, you can go out to Las Vegas and train with Jeff Mayweather and fight in the States. Do you have a time frame on how soon you expect to be out again and, and cracking on with this well, final when, phase of your career? <coughs> sorry, when, I, when, I'm, when we go there, I'll, I'll be training for five months first, getting myself to see in the best possible shape. Yeah. Um, we ain't going out there just I fight it four weeks training camp and then the fight. We're doing it because remember I've been out of yeah. been out for quite some time. So um yeah, it's um there's it could be in the, it could be in Vegas and it could even be in, in London again. There's just there's the things going on that we can um we we've got options, should we just say at the moment, for for fight ways. But the main thing is going out there, getting in the best possible shape and um and uh, cracking on again and and achieving something that I want to achieve. When you talk about options in the UK, because it, it's through no choice of your own that you've been forced to think outside the box and, and campaign on other affiliated shows and look at boxing across the pond, what is your situation at the minute with the British Boxing Board of Control? Since your licence was revoked, I believe we're going back to about 2010. Ten. Yeah. Um, Nothing, nothing. I've, I've got obviously, as everyone knows, I've got a, a license with the British and British and Ireland Boxing Association, yeah, which is called Biba, Biba, yeah, and um, which is yeah, so at the moment I've got a license with them, and um, but with the with the board, who knows, you know, who knows what happens, but it'll it, come. It's not something if that door turns out to be shut permanently, it's not something that's going to affect your progress. Oh, no, nothing at all, nothing at all, it's not going to stop me from progressing to where I want to be. I mean, so it just means I can't fight for a British title. Sure. That's okay. It. I mean, uh, what is the, you know, um, you couldn't be in a better place in Las Vegas, one of the world boxing capitals, uh, at the Mayweather gym, presumably. Yeah. There can be plenty of sparring there. You, yeah. You've been in the stateside gyms before, as I had years ago, Decent. and you know as well as I do, it's a bit of a sink or swim environment. There, yeah. There's yeah. one thing that counts. It's not really, the only packing order is if you can fight or not. It doesn't matter who you are or, or you're, ethnicity and anything you get respect in those gyms in particular if you can fight yeah you know um, look Ben I think we all know one thing I can make is I can fight I mean and um, it's just doing it correctly now I mean no one's no one's questioning if I can fight everyone knows I can fight you know what I mean and, uh, we all know that so but now I just want to go out there I want to just want to do it do it everything correctly no um, more talking rubbish no more saying I'm going to do this and going to do that. I just want to go out there and just give it my best now. And People have always have always said that you can fight, like you say, and have that little bit of special, little bit of X factor, where, yeah. where someone's got something a little bit more. You know, mm. I still got that, don't worry. I still yeah. got that X factor. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, what, what was the 
problem? Is it just the typical lack of maturity that leads us to to do those kind of social things and get lost a little bit in the start yeah. before it's even really arrived yeah. back in the day? It's a good question, yeah. Um, I was just around, I was around wrong people. I was just in myself, I just thought, you know, I just thought I was too good. Then after train, and yeah. talent, talent means nothing if you don't put the work in. Did you think the following you had, because you were signed by Barry Hearn back in 2005, and you, you got off to a flying start with the first round KO, as I recall. Huge, yeah, yeah. And you were tipped for big things. And you were in that, before that, you were in that amateur shake-up where you were rubbing shoulders at training squads with the likes of Amir Khan and James DeGale, the incumbent British superstars of the sport. Did it encourage you to feel, with a bunch of fans around you as well, like you'd already made it before you actually had? Yeah. Um, I thought, yeah, like, I was young, I was naive, and I just generally thought, so I had a lot of money, like, yeah. like a rather than I just thought it was all going to, didn't think, nothing, just thought it was going to happen. I right? just didn't think, you, just, you don't think, you just think it's all going to be, it's just given, to, it's just, it was being given to me. So I was just, I was just taking it, not thinking of the, like, you've got to live and, you know, you've got to, you've got to be, the kids that are looking up to you, you've got to show, you know, a bit of, Responsibility is there as well, and I'm, I never did. I just thought, just kept taking, taking, taking. In the end, it was like, do you know what? We're not giving you no more. You ain't even appreciating it. I mean, it's, it's got to that kind of stage. But now, I'm, I'm, I'm not lucky, but I am lucky that I've got this chance. So I'm grabbing it with both hands, and I'm taking it. Are you fighting because you have a concrete goal that you'd like to achieve? Like you, you want to hit a certain level before you leave. Or are you fighting like many fighters because you honestly don't really know what else to do with yourself because it's the only thing that's ever defined you as a human being since you were a kid? No, it's, listen, I can, it's, I've, been wor- I've been working as, I've been working jobs for the last five years. It's, it's just not me. But I can always fall back on that. But the, the main reason is, is, as my granddad said to me before he passed, and I said in loads of other interviews, he said about being that man on a park bench in 15 years' time. Because uh, that's what kills you, you know, saying it could have been. I yeah. don't want to be that man on the park, park bench saying I could have been, you know, there's loads of them, them stories. So you will get closure from this regardless because. Yes, it's just, yeah. You're giving it your best shot, yeah. with full dedication, in the, one of the best environments on the planet for boxing. Yeah. And, you, and you will take whatever, whatever comes of it. Even, I'm, I'm not suggesting there won't be a lot of Ben, success. if I fail this time, if I fail this time, it's because I wasn't good enough. And you can live with that? If 100%, million percent. But I've failed of, of late just purely because I haven't put the work in. Nothing to do with my talent. I mean, and you, you know for yourself, I've mixed it with the best in sparring, yeah. I mean, and held my own quite easily. But when I've had to live the life of getting in the ring and, you know, putting a hard graft in, anyone can get in the ring and spar. Yeah. I mean, but when you've got to get down to a certain weight, living the life like an athlete, I never did that. Let's talk about weight. Uh, what, what, um, where are we at these days? Middleweight? Uh, no, I'm 12, yeah, 12, I'm 12, 12 at the moment. But will you fight at middleweight? Or you, oh, yeah, middle I, I, no more light heavies, no more super yeah. middles. They don't, I've, I've never lost up my natural weight. Yeah. So I can't be fighting super middleweight. I'm, I'm five foot nine. Yeah. I'm a midget. You know I mean? so it's, prime welterweight, prime yeah. welterweight like middleweight. It's just living, as I said, I don't want to sit here and say, I'm going to do this, going to do that. Should we get on with it now and crack on? No more talking. Just, you know what I mean. And that perhaps there'll be less pressure in a sense if, you, if you're fighting. I mean, you're going to be training in the states. Yeah. If you fight over there as well, things are a little different. Presumably, you won't be obliged to sell your half of the bill and bring a couple of 200, 300 people with you. So perhaps, perhaps that might enable you to focus more strictly yeah, yeah. on the office, as it were. But, uh, all, all I said, all I'm caring, worrying about now is just getting in the gym, training, and just being the best. Me, that is it. Not trying to please my my mates down the pub, trying to please everyone else around me. That don't put nothing my way, you know, not in a horrible way. Like I was going down the pub just drinking myself silly, yeah. and that's through depression, you know. What I mean? But and everyone knows the story there. But I don't want to. That's not me no more. I've well, I've got great people around me now. I mean, I've got massive, massive like backings that 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 have, you know that have given me this chance when they could go and give someone else here. It's certainly not a chance that everybody gets. Um, yeah, Barry McGuigan once said that there's a cliche in boxing 
that the fighter is the last person to know when he hasn't got it anymore. Barry said, nonsense, you're the first person to know. You're just the last one to accept it. Is that the... Is that um, the can I ask you, because you, based on... I think it's true what Barry said, and based on that theme, when you're in a ring sparring and whatever, have you not felt any decline from what you had, from what you had no. five, ten years previously? No. You feel, no. feel the same? feel the same. Just, oh, the only thing that level lets me down is just my fitness. Yeah. Because everyone knows I never trained. I just yeah. thought, because I know I'm good, I was, and I can have a row, I'll just get in the ring and just do it. Yeah, take but it you only, Exactly, but you only get to a certain level when you can just get in the ring and do that. Mm. When you get in there with kids that have put, put their, their life and soul into training... I mean, talent means nothing if you don't put the work in. And it's very, very true. And I had all the talent, just didn't put the work in. No one else to blame but myself. And as I said, I ain't going to sit here and talk about it. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to crack on. And I think, you know, the funny thing is it feels like you've been around forever, particularly when I described that scene when I first saw you when we were potential rivals in the, uh, in the amateurs. But in actual fact, you're only in your, you're only in your early, mid-30s. Yeah. We've seen examples where people have performed at elite level way beyond that, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, there really is no reason intrinsically why you can't go on and do this and still no. and still maximise your potential. You know, I, mean, I, I, will, I, will, I will achieve what I should have set out to achieve. I, I might have done the long route, you know, and then that's the story of my last one. See, I always do everything the hard way, and, but I'll get there. And, then, and, you know, I mean, I, I, I feel like being bad at it and I spoke to you today. I know... Uh, I think you know nobody will be happier than me if you shoot for the moon. Thanks very much. Nice one, thank you.